Okay, so in this particular paper, you can download this from the website. This is a foundation non-calculator. It's aimed at grades three, four, something like that. Please do stop the video, have a go at each of the questions. Okay, so on to the first one then. It says, work out the value of 32 minus four in brackets divided by seven plus 10. Okay, so the most important thing with this is that it's a bid mass type question. So you always do what's in the brackets first, followed then by either division or multiplication, and then afterwards by addition, subtraction. So the first thing we need to do is work out what's in the brackets before first, which is going to be 28. So we've got then 28 divided by 7 and then plus 10. So 28 divided by 7 is going to be equal to 4 and then plus 10 means that the answer for this particular one is 14. OK, so these type of questions generally tend to appear in the first few questions on a foundation paper, usually between about question number one and question number five or six, something like that. OK, let's move on then to part B of this. Zara says that that is equal to 100 and Zayna says that that is actually equal to 10. Who's correct? Well, actually Zayna is correct on this particular one because of bid mass. Because what we actually do is we do the multiplication, which is five times four is 20 and 30 minus 20 is equal to 10. So therefore Zayna is correct on this one. Let's move on then to question number two. Okay, so best advice here is always make sure you're up to speed with working with fractions. They are making a bit of a re-emergence with a lot of these papers. So please do um, have a go at fraction questions particularly, and they follow the same rules pretty much all the time. In this particular case, we're gonna work out a comparison. So in order to compare these two fractions, I'm gonna make the denominators the same. So in both cases, I'm gonna make them 56 because I can say seven times eight is 56 and eight times four is 32 so the direct comparison is 32 over 56 eight uh, seven times eight is going to be 56 so seven times five is 35 so the fraction that is larger is going to be five eighths and that would be the answer to that particular question okay likewise in question number three it's all about factorizing again very popular i've tried to pick out the most popular type of questions you're going to get in foundation papers for non-calculator okay so let's have a look at this one then so question number three we're looking to factorize 3x plus 9. Well, if we look at the numbers first, the biggest number will divide into 3 and into 9 is actually going to be 3. And there are no common letters, so it's going to be 3 brackets x plus 3. OK, factorise this. Well, we're looking for the biggest um, number or term that will go into both of those, which is actually going to be x. So that would become x times x minus 14. And that would be the answer to question number three. Please do download some of the practice um, worksheets from Three Minute Maths and you'll be able to have a go at some of these questions for yourself. OK, let's move on then to question number four. So question number four is one of those long kind of wordy type questions. Uh, three and a half litres of orange juice in a large jug. OK, and Abby is going to pour the orange juice in some glasses. She'll fill each glass with that. OK, so basically the way this works is that really it's a straightforward division type question. We're going to take three and a half litres, which is the same as 3,500 millilitres, and we're going to divide it by the amount of millilitres that Abby can pour, which is 275. So I'm going to write this as a fraction of 3,500 divided by 275. Now, the reason I'm going to do that is because I can make my calculation a lot easier by using equivalent fractions. Now, you could, if you wanted to, have a go at long division at this point. It might be a bit tricky to do that because the numbers are quite big, so I need to make the numbers a bit simpler for myself. <laughs> OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide top and bottom by 5. That's going to give me 700 over 55. OK, now I have done this slightly by mental arithmetic, but you might need to write something like that if you wanted to, and that would give you the answer of 55. And then I'm going to go and divide by 5 again, and that's going to give me 140 over 11. And that's a little bit more like it. It's much, much easier to divide by 11 than it is to divide by 275. Now, what I'm going to do is I need to know how many glasses she can pour. So basically, I need to know how 
how many lots of 11 there are in 140? Well, I know that 12 is going to be 12 times 11, which is 132. So actually the amount of glasses that she can pour is gonna be 12 glasses. And it's kind of easier to do that maybe nine times tables than it is by doing some sort of long division. Okay, remember we're not after accuracy of this, we're just after finding out how many glasses she can actually pour. Okay, let's move on then to question number five. So in question number five, we've got um, Ray buying a motorhome. Okay, here he is, he's buying a motorhome and he buys it for 20,000 pounds and then importantly, it depreciates by 10% for the first year. Now again, this is very, very common type of questions you're gonna get in foundation paper, so please do practice these. Okay, so um, what we've gotta do is in the first year, look at the depreciation. So basically, we've got 20,000, and we're going to subtract 10%. Well, 10% of 20,000, you move the decimal point one place along, that's 2,000, so it's gonna be 20,000, minus 2,000, and that's going to be 18,000. Okay, so at the end of the first year, the motorhome is worth 18,000 pounds. And then we need to depreciate it further by 15% in the second year. So we've got to work out 15% of 18,000. And that's fairly okay, because actually, what we could say is, well, we know we can work out 10%, so 10% is going to equal 1,800. We know we can work out then 5%, which is half of that, which is 900. So therefore, in the second year, it's going to depreciate by a further 2,700. Now, remember, it's 2,700 from a starting point of 18,000. So we've got to take that away. OK, so we've got that calculation of 18,000 minus 2,700, okay, and however you do that, hopefully you'll end up with 15.3, so therefore, at the end of the two years, the motorhome is worth 15,300. Okay, hopefully that's all right for you. Let's move on then to question number six. Now, question number six, we're moving more into kind of grade four type territory here with an arithmetic sequence. I have published a worksheet and a video on dealing with arithmetic sequences. Please do download from the website, have a go at some of these questions. They are very much accessible, providing you follow the rules of how to get there. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to figure out that the common difference is going to be adding six each time. Okay, so the common difference is plus six, which means that we can write this particular, what we call the nth term, as going to be initially 6n. But then the final piece of the jigsaw is we need what's called the zero term. Now, the zero term is where it starts from. It's the bit right at the very beginning. Because what we've got is the first term is 5. So therefore, the zero term is going to be minus 1. Because when we add 6 to minus 1, we're going to get 5. So therefore, it's going to be 6n minus 1. OK, now then the question says, is that particular number a term in the sequence? In other words, does it have a place? Well, the only way it's going to have a place is if that value of n is a whole number. So in other words, we can feed it directly into the equation and we can say 6n minus 1 must equal 133. Now, if I add 1 to both sides, I've got 6n equals 134. But if I divide 6, uh, 134 by 6, n is not whole okay so therefore not in sequence okay now if you're not entirely sure what i'm talking about there please do have a look at the post on three minute maths and that will give you a bit more detail let's move on to the final question in this particular uh, worksheet which is going to be question number seven and in this we're going to be looking at standard form again very very common for a lot of these types of uh, gcse papers and we'll just go through that fairly briefly standard form you need the first part of it to be between 1 and 9. So that's going to be 7.5. And then I've moved the decimal place um, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's times 10 to the power of 4. And that would be the first one. Okay, with part B, 
we're writing it as back as an uh, honorary number. So I've got 7.3. I'm going to move it back. One, two, three, four. It's minus four. So that's going to equal 0 0.00073. OK, and then part C. All right. Now, part C is one of those kind of final sort of questions that you get. Well, all you need to do is differentiate between the standard form and the calculation itself. You'll see what I mean. So what I can do is I can write this as three times four which is the actual calculation. And then the standard form is 10 to the power of six times 10 to the power of seven. So that's gonna be 12 times 10 to the power of uh, 13. Okay, now these are usually two mark questions, so be very careful here because you need to then put it into standard form. Standard form is where the first number is between one and nine. So we've actually got one more jump so that's going to equal 1.2 times 10 to the power 14. And that would be the answer to the final question. Hope it's been useful to you. Please do add a comment below if you're not sure about anything. I look forward to seeing you inside the next video.